What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Draymond Green Show YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like the post that you love, but you can get everything the Draymond Green Show right on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe. Check that out. Thank you. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Draymond Green Show. This next guest um, is a brother of mine, one of my golden brothers. We want a gold medal together. That is just one of his many accomplishments. He is a 2021 NBA champion, two-time NBA All-Star, three-time NBA All-Defensive first team, probably slighted a little bit there, two-time All-NBA Defensive second team. You can hide those because I got too many of those and he should be on first team all the time. Um, this, this last one is one of my favorites because this is him um, in a nutshell. In life, this is him in basketball. Um, like I said, I had the opportunity to play with him. Three-time NBA teammate of the year, Drew Holiday. What's up, my brother? Man, chilling, brother. Glad, 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 glad we can make this work, man. Glad I could be on here. And man, I appreciate you. And we've been making efforts to to make this happen. And Drew been making efforts. And our, yeah. you know, our schedules get a little crazy at times. And then you got the West Coast and the East Coast and all of those yeah. things. But we wanted to bring y'all this, and we doing it, Drew. I thank you for coming on the show, brother. For sure, for sure. Uh, man, let's just just take me back. Uh, number one, you, you like or just for starters, your your parents, uh, both played at Arizona State, played basketball at Arizona State. Just talk to me about, like, growing up in a household with parents that played at a high level, that understood that, because y'all are an extremely athletic family. Yeah, I think, um, honestly, it was it was competitive, but it was so natural for us. Like, everything that we did, yeah, it was it was competition, but I think our parents knew because they were competitors that uh, when it comes to family, um, that comes first. So mm. that was one of the big things. You obviously uh, play with my older brother, Justin, and you've seen my yeah. little brother uh, trying to do his thing in Houston. But um, mm. we've always we've always tried to be able to cheer for each other, you know what I'm saying, through our successes, help each other through our downfalls. But I think my parents did a really good job of um, keeping us competitive and then at the same time, like, loving on each other. So... It's been, bro, it's been, it's been a hell of a ride being able to kind of talk about my family. People don't even know about my sister. She played basketball at UCLA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but just really being able to uh, be competitors and then just love each other through all the other BS, you know what I'm saying? So. All right, the NBA season is in full swing. Coming down the stretch, then we move right into the playoffs in April, May, and June. I can't wait. Spice things up with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA right now. All you have to do is put down 5 bucks and get $150 instantly in bonus bets. Pretty good trade-off. I pay 5 I get $150. North Carolina listeners, do not forget. Welcome to the party. DraftKings Sportsbook now live in your state, North Carolina. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Takes 90 seconds. The code is Colin, C-O-L-I-N. Again, 90 seconds. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app. Put in Colin. New customers bet five. Get 150 back in bonus bets instantly. That is the trade. All right. The code is always Colin. The crown is yours. Absolutely. And how was that growing up? Like you being middle child. um, Yeah. Yeah. And, and just, just and but in particular up the boys and yeah. Justin Justin being older than you, what was that like? Because you're way like yeah. way thicker than Justin. Justin's yeah. skinny as hell, a, a twig. Like, yeah. what was that like growing up? Um, and y'all two playing against each other, two totally different games as well. Um, man, I tell people all the time, my brother made me who I am. Uh he's taller than me, uh, longer arms, he could jump higher. So all the finishing and stuff that I usually do over people and trying to do it over, you know, length and people that are taller than me, it was because of him. Um, Mm -hmm. And obviously him being older, like I looked up to him, a lot of the stuff that he did, um, I always wanted to do. So I'd I'd follow his game, I'd mirror him. And then once I kind of got a chance to like be on the same level or try to, when we played one-on-one or two-on-two, he would like always block my shot. Uh, He'd always take the ball from me, but, I mean, shoot, he made me better just because we had battle every day, bro. Every day we had battle. 
we fight, go inside for 20 minutes, cool off, and then come back outside and start start hooping again. So it was a uh, man. I so much credit goes to my big brother for just the the player that I am. No, that's fire. And <clears throat> you went to Campbell Hall. Uh, back when we were in high school, for those of y'all that don't know, me and Drew is the same high school class. If yeah. you look up our high school rankings, you'll find Drew pretty fast. It'll take you a long time with your magnifying glass to find me on those rankings. Nonetheless, it was rightfully so. Um, I was not the <laughs> player that rough, I became. Yeah, you rough. know, it's okay. It, it, it all worked out at the end of the day. Yeah. But there's a lot of kids in L.A. now going attending Campbell Hall. Uh, wasn't quite that way when you attended Campbell Hall, what was it that drove you and your family to, or you to go to Campbell Hall in the, in, in the first place? Uh, so my mom works there. My mom's worked okay. there probably 10 years before I got there. Um, ah. I had some, I had uh, like my auntie and my cousins that went to school there. So we were actually going there for a better education. It was nothing mm. about sports, nothing for sports. It was about um, getting a better education. We got to get to college. We got to graduate from college. My mom being a teacher um, and an educator, that was what was most important to her. Mm -hmm. uh, she would always tell us, like, if you're good enough, you will make it anywhere. Yeah. They will find they'll find you anywhere if you're good enough. So we're not going to go here for the basketball. We're going here for the education. And that's kind of how it started. And then now, I mean, it's just totally different, especially like the private school game and uh, I mean, you have so many other athletes now who made some money and they can have their kids in private school and mm -hmm. doing all that. And obviously it being in L.A., um, the abundance of hoopers that you have in kind of this small area um, has been crazy. And it's been fun to watch kind of kind of from a distance. So, um, yeah, when I went to Campbell Hall, man, it was we it was me and my brother and uh I mean, a couple other dudes from, from Pasadena or whoever, and then all of a sudden it's, like, blowing up. Yeah, no, it's crazy to watch, I think. Like, I remember, if I remember correctly, y'all had an ESPN game when we was in high school, we right? We did. Delvon yeah, Rowe. I remember watching that. Yes, I, yeah. which is why I watched it, because Delvon, we were both going to Michigan State. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, definitely remember that game. Uh, but then you you stay home. You go to UCLA for one year. Um what was it like? Like, what did it do for you at that time to have a, another guy like Darren Collison on your team where you're coming out, you're top five, but don't have to shoulder all the responsibility at point guard because you got a vet like Darren Collison? What What was that like Man, uh, for you it was, in college? Yeah, I think it was a blessing in disguise, you know? Um, obviously, going into college, especially nowadays, where, like, you see freshmen come in and they kind of had a world on their shoulders. Um, a lot of pressure to do a lot as a freshman. I mean, an 18 or 19 year old kid where that could be hard. Um, for me, I had somebody who's a seasoned vet, uh, went to what, two or three, um, final fours and, mm -hmm. uh, made some big plays and had some big games and kind of ran, uh, UCLA basketball and kind of the whole campus and everything. So it was cool just learning from him and then being able to get drafted with him the same year. Um, and then, and then play against him in the league for so long has been, it's been cool. Definitely like a bigger brother to be able to kind of step into college life with and then and then the NBA. Yeah. No, I, and man, I remember that. We went further than y'all my our our freshman year, but you did. You went on <laughs> to the league. Seventeenth pick. Seventeenth <laughs> pick after freshman year. Yeah. Um drafted by the 76ers yeah. in the 2009 NBA draft. Uh you then go on to become the youngest all-star at least at the time, I'm not sure if it still stands, but you go on to become the youngest all-star in 76er history. And right. then the next year, you're traded. I I remember talking to Andre Godala. Um, you know, Andre, obviously, we played many years together. Yeah. And, and he specifically talked about when they traded you to us before, and he was like, I was talking to Drew, like I can't remember the story vividly, but something I was talking to Drew, he was on vacation or I was on vacation or something. And like you out the blue get traded. What 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 do you think about the business at that time? You coming off an all-star and you get traded the next year for Nerlens Noel. Man, I didn't know what to think. I like you said, I just became an all-star. Um, I just signed an extension and 
I mean, I thought I was one of the cornerstone pieces or one of the major pieces of uh, 76ers basketball, like Philadelphia basketball. Me, Evan Turner, Dad Young was still there. I think they had already mm-hmm. traded Dre. They had already traded Lou Will. Um, but it was like, Dang, I was on my way to a Dodger game. I just did a camp. Okay. I just did a camp in uh in Orange County at one of my best friends' colleges in Orange County. We went our way to a Dodger game, and I get a call from Sam Hinky, like, uh, "Hey, man, we've never met because this is when he started taking over that that mm. year." Yeah, he's like, "Hey, man, I know we've never met. Heard great things about you, uh, but we're trading to New to New Orleans for none as Noel." It was like a thirty second conversation. I had never met him or talked to him before. I think at this point I don't even know what bro looked like. So wow. <laughs> yeah, so we was we was on our way me, I think my brother and some of my best friends on the way to the Dodger game. And next thing I'm like, next thing you know, I get off the phone, I'm like, hey y'all, I just got traded. They're like, Haha. no, you didn't. I'm like, all right, two seconds later, pops up on the uh on the little screen, ESPN. Drew how they got traded for number six pick, turns Noel. That, that's crazy. And that's how you, I found you, out, bro. Yeah. Just so like that. You, you, that's the only conversation you've ever had with Sam. I haven't spoken to him before or after that. Wow. That's the only conversation I've had. He came in and did that. Let's look back at that. All right. But I mean, so when he they starts had doing that. Noel, they had Michael Carter Williams. Remember, Michael Carter Williams, I think, got rookie yeah, of the keep year. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, Come on. Keep going. <laughs> Tell me somebody else. See if it works. <laughs> but I mean, I think I was like, I like to think I was the start of the process. That's you you are like the start of the process. I'm just not sure the process has uh, ever worked. It, he got it could, fired. It could still be going. Yeah, I don't know. It could I mean, you get going. Joel, right? Like, all right, so you got Joel. Everything else outside of that process didn't work. Yeah, that's tough. Like, That's Joel tough. is obviously my, but everything else outside of the process failed. Everything. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, they traded Evan away after me. I mean, and I called Evan right away because Evan was my dog. Like, I got I got drafted. The next year, Evan Turner got drafted. Mm-hmm. And he, like, there's no way that they just traded you. I'm like, bro, <laughs> look, like, <laughs> we are not, like, me and Evan thought we'd be teammates forever. We We thought we were the youngest. The two best players on the team, we thought we'd be teammates forever. And just like that, literally 30-second conversation. That's crazy, man. That's the yeah. NBA for y'all folks. That and is it, and the yeah, NBA. And, 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 it, and it ain't any different now. Like, it might even be a little worse now because you have Twitter, you have Instagram, like you have these other outlets, uh, media outlets that'll catch it before you do. And I, maybe that hurts a, li- a little worse. Like, I've seen a couple of teammates come in from a game and find out they get cut. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know yeah. you've experienced it too, where like you've seen teammates just like, dang, bro, like I had no clue and they didn't have the balls to tell you face to face. You know what I'm saying? Before anything yep. else got out. I'm talking about like right after you step off the court, right after you just got done playing. To me, that's crazy. To me, it's, yeah, to me, to me, that's crazy. No, I think it's, it, it's, it's, it actually should be illegal. I agree. Like, I agree. because if I came out and said something about a trade before, I get fined. For sure. 100%. So why is it that they can announce me being traded right. and, and my feelings just got to be hurt? Right. Like, <laughs> and I'm left to pick up the pieces of my feelings. I'm left to pick up the pieces of my life. I'm left, like, I'm just left to pick up the pieces. But if I said that first, no problem. Like, I mean, come off the bread. Yeah, yeah, I need that. Like, yeah, it should it should be illegal. Take take me through the process this time though. Uh, this time around, there's a bunch of reporting going on that Damian Lillard is going to get traded. Mm-hmm. No one knows where he keeps saying Miami, or people keep saying he no, Miami's number one choice or the Knicks. Bucks isn't even a conversation. Uh and then. All, like, how soon with that did you know that you were getting traded? And Yeah, I was, um, I mean, so I, I, through the week, you know, in the off season, um, you go in, I'm already in Milwaukee because my kids go to school there and they started school and we working out 
I mean, most of the team is there working out. And Monday, Tuesday, I work out. I take Wednesday off, kind of do my own thing, recovery day. And then Thursday, Friday, I work out. And then the weekends, I kind of do my own thing, me and my wife. Uh, well, Wednesday was my day off, and I'm taking a nap. And I'm taking a nap, and I got my I got my watch on, my Apple watch on, and uh, I see the text. I see a call from the GM, and I'm like, I'll call him back. Like, I'm deep in this nap, too. I'm saying it's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. And then two seconds later, my agent calls me. I'm like, all right. So I pick up his call. He's like, you talk to him? I'm like, nah, bro, I'm sleeping. He's like, well, you just got traded, so you should, you should probably call him back. And then I ended up looking at my phone. He ended up texting me um, everything that was happening. Like, yeah, we traded you here, here. And then I ended up calling him, and he ended up saying, like, yeah, we traded you for Damian Lillard. So I also had no clue. Like, just like the world had no clue, I also had no clue. Uh, he did tell me, I think, before it broke on Twitter and all that. Um, the, the world kind of knew. But I think for me, it was just a shock because I had no clue, like, out the blue. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think a part of me thinking, like, maybe I felt like I, not that I was untouchable, but maybe I had done enough to at least let me know 24 hours in advance, not five minutes in advance. And maybe I'm asking for too much. I don't know. But it's kind of like, I mean, we won. I won there. You know what I'm saying? We we won there. So How many championships think, in Bucks history? Yeah, you ain't, 50, you ain't asking 50, for too much. You ain't 50 year, for too much. 50 year span. But again, I'm not, I'm not upset with it. I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not upset with it. It was just more of a shock. Like, I didn't, I didn't think that, if I was going to get traded, I thought I would at least know in advance. I could prepare mm-hmm. my family. Uh, I could prepare my kid. Like, we had a life there. And like I said, my kids were already in school. Um, and then that next Sunday or that next Monday was training camp. Wow. So, it, like, it wasn't, like, in the middle of the summer or the middle yeah. of the offseason. season. Like, no, we had four days. So, I, I have to figure out how to move my family. I got to figure out. Uh, for one, I, I got to figure out where I'm going. Because yes. I didn't end up staying in Portland. <laughs> and that also took a minute, too. So I'm in limbo for three days. Like, mm-hmm. not really knowing what's going on. Um, and then when it all kind of came together at the end, I, I mean, I really thank God for Portland and uh, and Chanti and, and the GM there because they really, uh, like, did did good by me. Um, just mm-hmm. really asking me and talking to me where I wanted to go and if, uh, if I was on the same timeline as them and all that and they, they did it I mean I love them for that but um, it was just such a shock and then being thrown into another system that I had no clue about but being traded four days ago and then having just to fly there and go straight into training camp was crazy did you get a chance to talk to Giannis Dame, anybody? Like, any uh, of those guys? I talked to Dame. I was like, uh, hey, bro, you're going to love her here. Um, I think, like, because honestly, just like everybody else think, I thought Dame was a good fit with Yanni. Mm-hmm. Like, how they play together, mm-hmm. the the pick and roll, um, adding K-Mid to that. And you got, you got Brooke, obviously, stretching the floor. You got Bobby stretching the floor and being a bully in the paint. Um, I thought it was a good, I thought it was a good fit for him. So I, I ain't had no, no hate or anything. Um, I talked to Giannis a little bit, but the first person that called me was Chris. And mm. he came, he, he came to the house and, uh, we had a, we had a deep conversation. We had a, we had a good conversation. So, um, oh, nice. yeah, yeah. Came, came in my boy. So it, it was, it was good to, um, kind of talk it through with him because honestly, I think, a lot of them were just as shocked as, as I was. Like, I don't think anybody knew. I think they kind of uh, kept it close to the chest for the most part. Again, I don't know who knows, who knew, like, the whole story and who didn't. So I can't speak on all that. But, like, I know I know a lot of them, they just kept it close because if it did get out, I, I, I yeah, again, I don't know. It For me, it's like I'm a grown man and 
if you tell me that like I'm possibly going to get traded, I'm going to be like, all right. Yeah. I think that's a tough thing to do, though, for a GM, for being who you are and what you meant to that team. Um, and like, like you have to play well for that team to win. If they like, yo, you may get traded and then all of a sudden you don't, that could be tough because like, all right, well, trade me then. Like, like get me out of here now. So I, I get that from a certain extent, but this isn't a normal situation. This isn't like some guy that just played here and now we just moving on because it didn't work. Like we just won a championship. We're, we're within two years of winning a championship And we still have championship aspirations. Is pulling me out of the puzzle going to help better that championship? I personally don't think so. Um, Not that Dame isn't great, but just for what you meant to that team. Like, that team took a big hit defensively all year because of the way people don't understand. The way Giannis and Brooke play in the drop, that only works in today NBA if you have a guard that a doesn't get screened and right. chases over the ball like a hawk, like he chases over right. the screen like a hawk. And with you chasing over the screens, they can sit in that drop, and you're good enough to funnel them to the drop. All of a sudden, you remove that, and you don't have anyone to do that. And Grayson Allen was gone, who I also thought was y'all second best perimeter defender. Bro. Like defense Bro. took a huge hit. We've all had a frustrating experience buying tickets, even me. You all know I love to go to concerts, shows, and it can be hard to find last minute tickets. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all the sports, music, comedy, and theater shows near you. I'm looking through the Game Time app right now, and it's really easy to find tickets at different price points. The NBA season is winding down, and we have some huge dubs games we're going to need your support at. We always talk about strength in numbers, and we need y'all to be loud at these games coming down the stretch. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. They have all-in pricing, so you know exactly how much you're going to pay. Plus, the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code word GREEN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Create an account and use the code word GREEN, G-R-E-E-N, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Bro, when I tell people during that time, because me and Grayson, um, just ironically, me and Grayson didn't go in the same day. The day that we got traded, Grayson also didn't go in that day. Which I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why. But Grayson was killing. This offseason, Grayson put in work and he was killing. I'm like, he is the best player on the court this offseason. So I think all of it kind of, like, looking back at it, I'm like, man, it was, I do think defensively it was a big, um, it it hurt him a lot, but you know trades can be made, and you can try to find oh, yeah. defense and, and and do all that. But I agree with you. I think that I was kind of perfectly put, or I fit perfectly in funneling guys to Brooke, who I think last year had career high in blocks. Obviously, you see what Giannis does, blocking shots and stuff. So um, I was like, I was meant for that, but. Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, Brooke, Brooke was mentioned as defensive, possibly defense player of the year last year. Yeah. And I, I, I don't remember nobody ever m- mentioning Brooke for nobody's defensive player of the year. So that does <laughs> definitely show your impact. But um, did so, so you pretty much chose to go to the Celtics. Like the, the Blazers kind of gave you that right to just kind of pick were, where you wanted to go? Yeah, there were other teams that I wanted to um, – they were one of the teams that I wanted to – uh, try to go to. Obviously, they have pieces. Um, I think something happened with Brock, Brock, uh, with Malcolm earlier where yeah. he didn't go to the Clippers. Mm-hmm. So I think he was maybe looking to go somewhere else. And um, he was definitely one of the teams. But I wanted to go to a contender. I mean, there's a few of them out there where I felt like I could make my impact. There was like, there's the Clippers at the time, there's Miami, um, there's the Celtics. And I think maybe those are the, like the, big three, the the ones that um, I feel like, you know what, if I go there, I could really, really do something. And, you know, after you get traded, sometimes you kind of question 
um, not your abilities, but like sometimes your confidence, like, mm -hmm. am I as good as I think I am? Cause like I can just be traded for nothing or not even know about it. Um, but to see so many people kind of text me and be like, dang, like I didn't see that coming. Getting those text messages, man. I'm like, you know what? Like, yeah, I, I, I can still hoop. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't over for me. I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm still nice. So it was cool. It was cool to kind of have that feedback. But what was your reaction? Like, initially, like, y'all just finished playing the Celtics and, and back and forth for the last few years. And, you know, that thing has grown, grown into a rivalry. Yeah. What was your reaction to that? Was it was it more like, damn, I don't know if I want to go? Or because of the way they traded you, it's just like, no, I actually want to go there and get back at them. Uh, It was more like, yeah, I want to go there and win. It wasn't necessarily to get back at them because – like I told you about my first trade experience, um, it's happened to me before. I've been traded without knowing. I've been traded for, um, I mean, for whatever reason. And it just got like, like 30 second call. I'm somewhere mm -hmm. else. So, and I still love the guys on the team. You know what I'm saying? But I also want to beat them. Yeah, and I also want, sure. You know what I'm saying? I also want to beat them. So it's not like in spite. I didn't go there in spite of them. I went there because like, that's my best chance of winning. And again, mm -hmm. it ended up working out to where I feel like the Celtics equally wanted me too. Like it wasn't they just needed me. You. Right. It wasn't just me going after them. Like they also pursued me too. So I think it was, mm -hmm. it, th that definitely worked, but it wasn't, I wasn't going there. Like, yeah, I'm going to get back at the, at the bucks. Mm -hmm. It was like, well, I'm going to go there and win. And if we got to go through the bucks, then we're going through. Absolutely. And, and yeah, I, I, you know, I can appreciate that and I love it because see what people and you know people get mixed up all the time and they forget these 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 time of these events. Marcus Smart was already traded. The Celtics didn't have a point guard going into the season. Like yeah. again, 4 days away from training camp. They didn't have a point guard. This Damian Lillard trade actually made Brad look like a genius <laughs> because now all of a sudden you 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 end up in Boston. Yeah. They traded Marcus Smart not knowing that that was happening. Not knowing. You know, it was not almost knowing. like a panic. Like, oh, man, we can't win. All right, the money getting up there, JB money kicking in. We know we about to pay JT. We might as well start getting off some stuff now. It was almost like a panic and like them letting go of the rope, how I viewed it. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you pop up. And everybody's like, oh, Drew's in Portland, but Drew said he's not staying in Portland. He's available. And they come up on you, and, it, it, and I mean, it's changed everything. It's, uh, uh, it's been fun, bro. I'm not going to lie. It's been, it's been fun. Uh, the culture here in Boston, um, what it means to win, uh, the history that it has. Like, me being from L.A., growing up a Laker fan, facts. that was probably the weirdest part for me. Ah. Like being in that green, being the like being a Celtic, knowing that I was gonna sign and be a Celtic was like, like, am I portraying my roots, like where I came from? Obviously, growing up a Kobe fan, I thought I was supposed to be six eight and be like Magic. <laughs> like, like, am I betraying where I came from? Because all my family to this day still Laker fan. Mm -hmm. Like, Absolutely. I got I got family that came to the game in Boston with Laker stuff on. I'm like, you got that me messed up. Crazy. Thinking that you're going to come and watch this game with a LeBron jersey on. Like, what is wrong with you? Right. Right. I got, like, like I got family from L.A. who still came to the game with Lakers stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's that's crazy to me. But that's the rivalry. That's, like, mm -hmm. the history mm -hmm. behind it. Um, but being in that Celtic green, bro, like, it, it, it like, the pressure, is like, it's different. It, I mean, you could probably attest to it. Like, being on top for so long or even then like kind of doubting you like you can't win like all they talk about here is winning and the only thing that is important is winning and i'm like man i'm i'm here for it bro like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here for the ride so i'm excited i'm excited to be here now that's crazy but that's also a different type of pressure like even for us when we came in here this like we made it to the playoffs my rookie year. We pour water on each other. Like Mark Jackson right. don't don't do liquor. Like we had a water right. celebration, not champagne. Right. But because that was like, I mean, the biggest moment was was the we believe season. Yeah. And, and 
like since 75. That was the biggest right. moment in history was the We Believe winning the first round playoff series. So we didn't necessarily have like pressure to win at the level that we've won at because right. the, you just couldn't compare it to anything. But you saying y'all feel that pressure. Like they make sure y'all feel it and know like, no, we, we, we got to win championship. That's it here in Boston. I mean, you played, you played in the, in the garden. You know what yeah, the fans yeah, are like. Crazy. You know how crazy they get. Yeah, right. It's like, it's, it's live or die. Like they, Celtics green all the way. So mm-hmm. I think kind of being in a position and bro, big, like big props and big ups to JT and JB, because I feel like they holster most of the, the pressure. Like a mm-hmm. lot of it is on them because they've been together for so long. And and kind of have gone through this where they've been to the conference finals and they've been to the they've been to the finals and all that so many years in a row. Um, and even what they did last year, like almost coming back from uh, down 0-3 against the against the Heat. Yeah. Um, I, I think that playing with them and seeing like now that I'm on this side and seeing like the pressure that they go through and how they handle themselves is like is is ultimate professional. Like, I don't think a lot of people would be able to do what they do. No, that's incredible. And they carry it well because it doesn't come off that way. Like, obviously, we all hear the talking heads on ESPN or on this show or, like, but to be feeling that pressure at home, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, to be feeling that pressure from your fans to, like, yeah. that's a different type of thing to handle because when it, at any moment, like, you hit a rough patch. Yeah. Like they, you should trade this person. You should trade that person. Right. And yet, you still got to try to keep that same love for this fan base because you're one in the same in a sense. You're trying to for do sure. the same. It's that's that's a tough thing to do, and I don't think people realize how much that takes and how much that says about those two, yeah. and, and just where they are in their maturity. Yeah, no, nah, it's um, and I saw that from day one, bro. Like, and you know JT, and I mean you know JB too, but you know JT mm-hmm. like. Super cool and calm. It don't seem like mm-hmm. anything mess with him and, and, and all that. But um, I know, like, again, just being here and seeing that type of pressure, bro, I'm like, man, like, I really admire it. Like, and they do it with such yeah. a grace. Um, and, and just how they handle themselves is, like, way wiser uh, or, or, like, wise beyond their years. So it's been yeah. it's been cool to kind of see that. That's super dope being on the other side and now being with them. Yeah. Um, you, you coming to the Celtics, your role has changed quite a bit offensively. Um, but in that change and offensively, me having the opportunity to play with you, um, watching you play, you don't get off on offense. Like you're more than capable of scoring the ball at any level, which I think most people don't understand. You can take guys to the post. You are a great finisher around the rim. You have a floater, you have a mid range, you have a three point shot. There's guys that average far more points than you in the NBA that can't score at every level like that. And so just to be able to score like that already puts you in an elite category. However, you've taken on a lesser role knowing that JT's going to get a lot of shots, JB's going to get a lot of shots, and everything else from there is flea throwing. It's you. It's D, it's D, D, uh, D White some nights. It's Al some nights. It's Peyton some. Like, it's so free-flowing outside of those two getting the shots that they're going to get every night, and your role has changed. Great. Granted, I understand that. Maybe people don't understand that. But I, I don't really want to talk about that. What I want to talk about is the role that I see you playing now on the defensive end. Because mm-hmm. you've gone from a guy who, like we were speaking about earlier, where you're going to be on Steph Curry. You're going to be on Kyrie Irving. You're going to be on the best ball handler at all times. To now, you were on me when we played y'all to start the game. And I see you playing more of a – like I used to love to do that when our lineups allowed for me to just match up with a – guy who's maybe a lesser shooter, I can I can mess up y'all offense in a totally different way than just yeah. having to go guard that guy. And I see y'all doing more of that now with you. How has that been for you adjusting to that role as opposed to being the the guard and the dominant ball handler all the time? It's been a it's been a different experience for sure because like you said, and especially when we first came into the league, it was like you guarded your matchup. 
Absolutely. If I was the point guard, I guarded the point guard. If I was the two, I guarded the two. Uh, and honestly, my first few years or whatever, like I don't ever think I guarded a, a, a three, like a small forward or whatever. It was either point guard or shooting guard. Now, and then it became like hound the ball. Best player, don't matter if they six eight, don't matter if they five ten, hound them. And those two are kind of the same though. Like I still had to hound because you know when we came in, the point guard is just the one who brings it down, sets people up, and does all that. But they didn't pretty much the main ball handler getting it to the guy in the spot where they where the guy. Yes, was. absolutely. Now it's like. I think our first time we played Philly, I was guarding Joel. Like, he's 7'2". <laughs> I'm 6'4". And I, someday 6'5", depending on if I got my hair up right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I think kind of like being a roamer or disrupting kind of like what you said has been so fun to me. Yeah. It's been so fun because I see the game in a different way now. I see mm-hmm. the reason why I'm on this person. Um, I'll start to catch it now. Me and Joe talk about that quite a bit. Like, I'll start to catch what Joe is thinking defensively before he tells me. I'd be like, hey, you want to do this? He'd be like, yeah, 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 that's what I want to do. I'm like, <laughs> see, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to catch on. Before, I was just so locked into hounding the ball, disrupting it, sending them over the screen, sending them down to Brooke or Yanni. Uh, before that, sending them to AD uh, when I was with the Pelicans. So it was like, that was, it was a consistent, um, type of thing that I was doing. And now, mm-hmm. bro, one day I might be on a non-shooter. The next day I might be on a shooter. I might be on the big for if they want to come up and set a screen, but we don't want the big in it. So because I'm on him, now he's in the corner and and now they're going with like somebody else who's maybe less of a shooter. You know what I'm saying? Like so many mm-hmm. things playing to the defense now and I didn't see the game that way. I was always the person who had to hear people tell me what to do. Which is a scary feeling. You out yeah. there on that island, everything's yeah. happening behind you. Yeah. But you can't turn and look. And you just have to do Like, you're at the mercy of whether the big wants to talk or not. For sure. A hundred percent. And then, yeah, so I I learned early to let my bigs get the rebounds and, and feed them the ball and stuff because then they talk. But now I'm the one screaming. I'm like you. I'm trying to be loud. I'm trying to be crazy. So, so like my teammates ain't getting smacked by screens, or they know what's going on in situations. And I think that that was something a little different for me because I'd always been like, like a quiet player because I didn't really have to say much. I was always on yeah. the ball. You know what I'm saying? So it's a it's been a cool experience. Like I guess I'm 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 like Draymond Green. <laughs> no, way better, way better. <laughs> um. <clears throat> And I, I, I include myself in this. Anytime someone talks about a defender being overrated in the NBA, I, I, I cannot recall ever seeing one person say another name outside of you. Yet, you've never finished higher than seven plays in defensive player of the year voting. What do you make of that? Because that, to me, I, I know the type of defender you are, number one, um, and playing against you and watching you play. I know the type of respect that people have for you as a defender, especially those guys that you are guarding. But what do you make of that thing? Um, I think that for the most part, the people, the players in the NBA and a lot of the coaches in the NBA see how good of a defender I am. And that's all I need. Like, I can see the respect when somebody... And when my guy is going up to set a screen and they're like, no, go to the next one. You know what I'm saying? Best like best feeling you, you in know the world. It, bro, what? <laughs> I'm like, all right, respect. Um, to me, like, that's what I need. I don't really care for the accolades. I don't care for the whatever. Would it be cool to get DPOI yet? But I think me personally, it was for one, like I was super happy when Marcus got it, because it had been so mm-hmm. long since a guard had gotten it. Or mm-hmm. And no offense to the bigs out there that block shots, and I know that they affect the game, but like not all the time, they not guarding the best players night in and night out. They're not affecting the game in that way where they got to fight over screens or chase them around or hound them full court. Like, not saying that it's easy because I can't block shots. I'm not averaging five five blocks a game, 
But you would know, like you have to guard, you have to guard the best players. At the end of the day, you had to, you, they were either trying to get away from you or you mm-hmm. would go and seek them out because you knew like, I'm that guy, I'm 10 toe. So when Marcus got it, I was like so excited because I'm like, all right, well, we trending in a direction now where I feel like it could possibly go to guards and, and do all that. But me not getting it, man. I I could I could care less. Uh, I wouldn't you say got, care less. I, I wouldn't say care less, but like, um, um, it, it I don't lose sleep over it. You got more. You have more respect from your peers as a defender, as I wouldn't say more. You have as much respect from your peers as a defender as Steph has as a shooter, or as like from. I mean, the guys you've guarded. Like, if you right. talk to the guys that you've guarded. Like, they don't think for a second, like, oh, Drew Holiday. Like, like you ask him, Drew Holiday. Like, no question. And that's what I, like, it's just the same way. Like, obviously, Steph is the greatest shooter we've ever seen. If you ask who's the best shooter, the first, Steph Curry. Like, mm-hmm. no, not a second thought. Like, Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. And guys that you've guarded, that know the game, that know what is what they're facing when they're up against you, it's the same. It's Drew Holiday. No, no question. And mm-hmm. I think, and that's as crazy, you just said, like that's 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 the biggest compliment one can ever get. Ever. That's that's crazy to me that like it's not even a question. It's not even a thought. Like yeah. Like when I hear people or when I hear that, like every time I hear it, bro, I'm like, yeah, that's that's insane to me. But that's yeah. that, that's a good feeling. That's a I think a part of the reason why like I I know I mean going to sleep at night, bro, I'm I'm good. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Um, and gearing up for, you know, you guys have the best record in the NBA by probably double digit games at this point. Um, playing better basketball or as good as basketball as anyone. I think Denver, Denver's playing great basketball right now too. So who's playing better? Tomato, tomato. Probably you guys and the way y'all been winning as well. But um, what do you feel as a champion on a team with guys who's gotten there, conference finals, gotten to the NBA finals, yet haven't been able to get on the, over the hump? As a champion, what is it that you see that is going to be important for y'all to be, or for you and the Celtics to be able to get over that hump that they haven't been able to get over? Um, man, I think it's uh, the sense of um, consistency, but like calm through the storm. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, in every series and every playoff run, something goes to shit. Like, some go bad. You got to have a little bit of luck. You got to have a lot of bit of luck and a lot of bit of health and stuff going your way to get to where you want to get to. But mm-hmm. I think that like our mindset right now has been really good and knowing, um, Obviously, been been there and experiencing it, me being able to, and then even them making it to the finals and losing, experiencing that, experiencing what it takes to get there. Um, I think that, I think that has been really good. Like our mindset hasn't been even when we up double digit games or even when we playing against the worst teams in the league. It's always like our mindset is to win this game, like go for the kill. And you know how it is. Sometimes, especially at this time in the uh, at the end of the year, it can get hard to play. Sometimes, absolutely. Like, bro, just get me to the playoffs. Like I'm. Facts. We already we already up ten games or twelve games or whatever. Like get me to the playoffs. That's what I'm looking forward to. But I feel like as a team, we're kind of in the place where it's like we can still learn from each game, mm-hmm. and I think that's mm-hmm. going to kind of take us and carry us um, over the top when, whenever we get to that point, if we ever do. Yeah. So. No, 100%. And I just think, like, the things that y'all are doing, again, like, just going back to the way y'all been winning. Like, when you're doing things like that, that to me is like, okay, they 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 ready. You know what I'm saying? Like, they are ready to win a championship. You know, not blowing games. You know, not, like, you guys supposed to be the team y'all beating them. You know what I'm saying? Like, beating them handedly, sitting fourth quarters. Like, and so... To me, and watching, it's like, all right, they really ready to compete for a championship now. You know, I think you you coming over there 
it adds a totally different demeanor to the team. I think it also adds a totally different confidence on both ends of the floor. And I see that y'all y'all have been able to benefit from that. Uh, but how what what is it that you've seen now this year and being on the side that you're on as opposed to the side that you were on with Jason Tatum? Like, what is it that makes JT so special that you've been able to see now? I think when I was going against them, um, I just saw him as an opponent. I didn't really take him for everything else, you know, like everything else off the court um, that plays into maybe the person he is uh, or even the player that he is. I think it was just an opponent. Like him and JB, like these are my opponents. I got to beat my opponents. Um, now that I see JT and obviously like, yeah, we played with him on the on the Olympic team and all that, but like really getting to know him now, and you you learn somebody on a deeper level, you can see um, honestly just how good of a person he is. And to me, I know that that doesn't always, I know that that doesn't always matter in winning, but to me, I think it matters. I think it matters how you treat people, uh, not just in the organization, the people that you work with, but like how you treat people off the court. Um, Every time I see JT with fans, bro, I'm like, he literally, like, doesn't take this for granted. You know what I'm saying? When he's talking to a little kid or he sees a little kid that has his jersey or, I don't know, somebody says something to him and he's turning and waving. And I'm like, he don't have to do that. Like, y'all came here to see him. Y'all came here to see him perform. But, like, he's giving y'all kind of like a piece of him, um, which I feel like means a lot. and. It's genuine. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the biggest part, like how genuine and how great a character that he has. I feel like that plays onto the court because, I mean, look, God loves a winner. God, God, God loves a giver too. And, and he's giving, he's giving more than he has to out of the kindness of his heart. So um, I feel like that translates on the court and you can tell like, bro, he cares about this game. Yeah. And it's not just stats. It's not just how I looked that night on a stat sheet. Like, he cares about basketball. And you can tell on the court, but off the court, you can also tell. No, that's absolutely amazing. And also, now being on the other side with JB, uh, to yeah. me, and watching him play, it seems to me like he's taking even more steps. And I've always been a fan of JB because I – you know, being out here in the Bay, I remember going to his game at Cal yeah. and watching him and being like, oh, man, this kid's a good athlete. Um, handle not great, shot not great. But he's a good athlete, got a great body, like mm -hmm. super athletic, like, you know, can score a little bit. And to see the player that he is today, where the, the way he can handle the ball, the way he can shoot the ball, like he is one of those guys to me that you see every year he gets better every year. And to me, it seems like this year he's even taken a bigger jump. Like what's it been like uh, watching, like playing against JB with the, gro the growth that he's been having over the years, but then also now being with him and, and seeing the growth up close and personal? Playing against him? It's kind of like what you said. There's always something that he couldn't do. He didn't shoot well enough. He finishes at the at the rim well because he's an athlete, but he doesn't shoot well enough. Um, or it could be, like you said, his handle isn't good enough. And I think coming into this season and throughout this season, he's just shown that, like, when people doubt him, he really take that to heart, bro. Like, oh, he don't have a left hand. And if y'all really look at JB game this year, He's been finishing crazy with his left, left hand. hand finishes. Yes, he and it's has. like I don't know if it's he do it on. Per, like, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know if yeah. he was just practicing that in the off season or, or or whatever it is. But like literally everything that you that they've talked about him not that good of a shooter. He's shooting the, the three very well this year. Like one of like one of our go to three point shooters. You know what I'm saying? Um, you should have told us that before we tried our defense, but go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we was like, oh, JB, shoot it every time. Bro. <laughs> every time, shoot the ball. Can you shoot? He like, yeah. <laughs> All right, shoot it. <laughs> but he, bro, I feel like everything, whenever somebody doubts him, he like, all right, I'm going to prove you wrong. And that's a dog to me. 
Mm-hmm. That's a dog to me. Like he mm-hmm. he just he got that that bark in him. He got that tough in him. That's um, like I really want to win. And I I mm-hmm. saw it before, like playing against him, that he really wanted to win. But it's even more now because like you hear the doubts that people had about him and can JB and JT do it together and we'll do we'll, and you see how they play together, bro. It's like, mm-hmm. like they play well together. They both work on their game and JB's mid range is, is going crazy. His finishes at the rim are going crazy. His three points going crazy. So man, I don't know. JB's a complete player to me. And here's yeah. the thing. He don't, he he we got him in the corner at times like coming off down screens catching off down screens and making moves that way and then we'll we'll have him bring it down and him run point guard him running off mm-hmm. screen and rolls and and making plays and diamond people i'm like he has such a complete game to me that i i, I love i love playing with jt i mean uh, JT. he's definitely he's definitely put it together that's for sure uh and just switching uh, switching gears a little bit before we get out of here um i'd be remiss if i didn't ask about your wife um, who you cheesing already. <laughs> my dog. That's my dog. That's why. That's my girl. <laughs> but uh, a few questions about your wife. But number one, Lauren, who's incredible, um, World Cup gold medalist in, in soccer, for those of y'all that don't know, uh, was diagnosed some years back, I think in 2016, yep. um, with, with a brain tumor. And you... Number one, you're as solid as a person as they come, but you taking time away from the season, being there for her, um, taking care of her, like what was that like for you in that process of, number one, dealing with that, like the the scare of a brain tumor, like that's serious stuff. So that before any basketball, but then going on and, you know, like, yeah, I'm not going back to the season, like, That'll be there or or it won't be, but this is what I have to do. What was that whole process like for you or her? Um, for me, it was the easiest decision I made because much as I love basketball, it's always been God, family, basketball. So growing up, being in the church, obviously, you know, growing up, your mama drag you to church and all that, and you don't want to go. <laughs> but when you're faithful, I feel like God blesses you, and he's done that in my life so many times. And another thing that my family has always taught me is that my family is most important. Obviously, I love the game of basketball and I've loved it since I was two or three years old, but I've loved my family more. So, again, we you've seen my family in the league. We've talked about them earlier, but my wife, like I told you, is my dog. Like, she's my, she's my person. And she has been for so long. Um, because of our same values, our same faith. Um, Not only that, though, but she's always pushed me in my career, and she's always um, had my back in my career. Like, when I had doubts about uh, me being traded from Philly to New Orleans, like, why would they do that after I had this type of season? Like, am I just expendable? She like, nah, you're the best player. You, no, you are the best player. So she would show she would show me love, but it's also because she experienced it herself. Like she got two gold medals in the Olympics. She got a, a World Cup gold medal, and the W in the uh, in the NWSL, she was two time uh, MVP and two time champion. That's like crazy. like 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 people don't know like she is the That's like the crazy. real athlete in my family, and I'm really just trying to sit at the table with her. But when it came down. <laughs> When it came down to to stopping to play basketball, bro, it was like, it was like, yeah, that's that's easy. Like she's she's my rock. I I wouldn't I wouldn't know what to do if I didn't have her. So it was it was an easy decision for me to take care of my family. And um, my daughter was also being born. So first, my daughter had to be born. She was five and a half weeks early. Uh, she was born premature. And then a month later, my wife had surgery all this happened at duke and carolina right so we got a newborn we got to make sure that she's okay and safe. she's in nicu for seven or eight days my wife is going crazy because she's like she should be home with us and i also still have to recover because i have surgery a month later and it's like it's gonna it's gonna be okay and then my wife had a 10-hour surgery like think of like being in a hospital room for 10 hours not knowing what's going to go on, oh, just waiting, God. but not knowing like somebody is 
like about that, <sighs> like cut your brain open. And you know, with your brain, so many different functions you can either have, you can have after, or you can lose them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So not only oh. are we waiting for to see what happens at the end of it, like she's also waiting. And it was like the longest ten hours in my life. I'm not gonna <sighs> lie to you, but we had support from my family, her family, our friends. It was like we got a really good community, but it was. Bro, it's hard. It's hard to think that somebody who is the best athlete in your family, somebody who's at, I mean, especially health-wise, like, the best health of her life, she just had a brain tumor. And to go through this, so, like, I'm kind of hurting for her because I'm, like, I'm an athlete. Like, what if that would happen to me? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and me not knowing what's going on. So it was, it was definitely a crazy time, but uh, we did it together, bro. And I mean, I, I, th I think that we made it through and, and God bless us with a healthy child. And we got another healthy child. Um, my, my daughter's seven and my son is, is three. So and my wife is healthy, too. So, I, man, I'm not I'm not upset. And then I just put in perspective what basketball really was. It's a platform mm -hmm. to show this ability that God gave me and the glory goes to him. But also it goes to show like. I, as serious as I take this game, there are things that are more serious. Yes, more 100%. important. Man, that's that's number one. That's crazy, but very special to see. I've been married now for a year and a half, but like to see that bond and like just being so willing. Like you know, people sign up for marriage for a lot of reasons. Yeah. And oftentimes people don't think like, yo, I'm going to have to deal with a woman that has a brain tumor and like take on all these things. And we have a one month old baby and yeah. now I have to take care of the one month old and my wife. And I mean, let's face it, man, we like your wife, obviously an athlete and doing her own thing on the af athletic side. But man, there's still so much that we don't so much of the burden that we don't have to carry due to our wives, you know? Yeah. And to now have the person who lift all the burdens up off you um, not be a burden to you because it's not a burden. It's something like I'm with you no matter what. For sure. But not be able to lift one of the biggest burdens, which is a newborn baby, and then yeah. also, you, you know, having to be so reliant upon you herself for you to just pull everything together, man, that says so much about your strength. And obviously, I've uh, you know I've known for years. Like I said before, one of the most solid people that I've ever met. You know what I'm saying? And I've known that for years. But to just hear that, like, and how you spoke about that, and to relive that, man, that's so special. That that is because. Again, like you said, she's extremely healthy. And not only is she a healthy person, she's thriving in her career. Thriving, bro. Thriving. Uh, like one of the best to ever do it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, crazy. And crazy. To, number one, just have to abruptly stop and like deal with all of those things, man. I, I take my hat off to her. I take my hat off to you and and your and and y'all family because that that's man, like that's just out of God, Lee, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, well, no, nah, I appreciate I it. It was, no, nah, it was a time in my life where, like, um, it was definitely hard. I actually, I'm not sure I really told anybody outside of, like, my close friends this, but, like, I didn't really tell my wife how I felt or what I was going through in those moments, like, in that mm -hmm. year span or however long we knew until two years after. Like, really? that two years later, I broke down and told her, like, by the way, I think we... Maybe it was, a, it was a year or two after the whole thing went down. And we in our bathroom, and I'm like, "Oh, by the way, like, this is what I like. This is how I felt during that time. You know, like I felt like I had to be strong for him, but like mm -hmm. internally, like I was scared shitless. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I was, I was, like I was, I was scared out of my mind. I was about to lose my best friend. I know, or I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know what was gonna happen to my daughter. But I ended up telling her just just one random day, like, "Hey, so." This is actually what I was filming back back when, back then. Just wanted to How let you know and get that out there. And she was like, 
well, it took you fucking long enough. And I, <laughs> cause, I mean, cause she, cause she know me. Cause she know me. She knew that in that time, like I'm all, I'm also hurting too. But mm-hmm. I also, she also felt like I had to be tough for her. Mm-hmm. And she like, yeah, it took you long enough. And I'm like, yeah, my bad. In my own time. <laughs> I mean, I had, I, I had to tell her. So. No, no, that's fire. That's fire. Yeah. Uh, and, and she, how is she now? She's good now. She's great. She's great, that's man. That's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. Still the rock. God yeah. is good. God, God is good. Man, bro, I appreciate you taking the time. Before we get out of here, uh, we're going to end it on a much lighter note than that. But there's, as you know, like, there's this influx of NBA brothers. There's this influx of NBA father, NBA sons. There's mm-hmm. this, there's just this influx of all of these things. Mm-hmm. You got the Antecumpo brothers. Yeah. And y'all, you got the mm-hmm. Currys. We'll add Dell in. We'll add Dell in for the Currys. We'll, we'll take Dell we back to his prime for the Currys. There we go. Who, we put all y'all up against each other. You got the Thompsons. You got Michael Thompson, Clay Thompson, Mikey Thompson. Um, you got Cody Zeller, Tyler Zeller. You got Mason Plumley, Miles Plumley. The other brother wasn't quite good enough. <laughs> yeah, little, little brother Plumley. Yeah, yeah. But you got the but balls. Like, you got the, the balls. You got the Lopez twin. Uh, you got the Morris twin, bro. There's a grip of them. It's crazy. Yeah. Who winning these games? Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Who winning these games, Drew? Come on now. Come on. Y'all now. taking them easy. Oh, it, it ain't easy because they, I mean, they hoopers, they NBA players, but come on now. We got dogs up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's your whole family, brothers. Don't make sense to me. It's your mom. It's your dad. It's your sister. It's you. It, it's your brothers. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it it's in our blood, literally. So, yeah, it it's an easy answer for me. <laughs> the most athletic family out of L.A. Drew, my brother, I can't thank you enough. Last question. Are y'all winning the championship? You know, I think we got a good chance, bro. I, I think, think we got a good we got chance. A good chance. I think we got a good chance. I, I don't. I, I don't like to speak on it. Like, or well, maybe out loud to myself. Obviously, I know what I'm thinking, but I think we got a good chance. There's a lot of things, obviously, in place, health, and, and all that that we got to stay locked into. But, um. Man, we got a real good chance. And obviously right now with a month left, like it's a good feeling going in to this process, knowing where we are mentally, knowing where I'm at mentally, feeling feeling real good. So, um, yeah, man, we got a good chance. I love it, brother. I love it. One thing I will tell you about y'all Eastern Conference playoff series before it starts, I think y'all handle the Eastern Conference. I really do. I think y'all are that good. Uh, one of the best teams I've seen around since, like, our power teams. You know, like, when we were, like, one of the best How was teams that for I've you, seen. Though? How was that for you, though? Like, you know what? Honestly. Y'all, y'all got one of the, telling you telling me, y'all got one of the best teams since since me. <laughs> like, like since us. <laughs> uh, honestly, we knew we were going to win a championship. It was yeah. just a matter of the date getting there. Like, right. When we got Kevin, it was weird. Not weird. Um, like, all of us playing together and trying to make it work, it was weird yeah, up yeah, until yeah, Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. And we got smacked on Christmas Day, if I'm not mistaken. Either we got smacked on Christmas. No, I don't think we got smacked. That may have been the game where Kyrie hit the shimmy yeah, uh, yeah, fade yeah. to win it. Yeah. But then... After that game, we lost that game to the Cavs because at that time, that was during a time where if you played in the finals, it was always a rematch on Christmas Mm -hmm. Day. And it was at the home team. You know, whoever won the finals, they got the home game. And so we're playing the Cavs, and, like, it don't work out for us in that game. Kyrie hits a tough shot, as Kyrie does. And And we lose that game. And I remember after that game, Kevin telling Steph, like, yo, you don't have to worry about me. Like, you don't have to try to give me the ball. Y'all don't have to try to run a bunch of plays for me. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to score the basketball. Do what y'all do. And when Kevin said that, that unlocked Steph, that unlocked Kevin. 
We beat them two weeks later by 50 points. And it was just, once that happened, it was just a matter of time of us like, yo, we know we win in a championship. And I'll tell you one of the craziest things for me with those teams, one of the craziest things for me was that, you know how coaches always say, like, you can't flip the light switch on and off. Like, you try to flip that light switch on and, and it don't turn on. Like, it just don't work like that. That is the first time in my life that I learned that was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> we literally, like, had times during the season where we turning up, we getting drunk, we, we kicking it. Yeah, and we, we have times where we we walk in and like, yo, for the next two weeks, we're going to approach this like playoffs. Nobody drinking, nobody going out. And let's just see where we at. We win nine games in a row or eight yeah. out of nine games. like, And so that's like, or we walk in at halftime, we down 20 points and we like, yo, turn it up now. Let, let's turn it up and go win this game. It's and time. by the yeah. end of the third quarter, we up 15 points. <laughs> like, and so for scary. me, were yeah, scary. it was crazy. The like, fact that y'all could like, have like a 30 point swing in what seven minutes yeah it was crazy yeah. it was crazy so I think that's what I like that's the thing that stood out most for me is that if we walked in a gym and we said yo this is a game we need to win or this is a game we need we gonna win or let's go win this game we, we were gonna win the game gonna like win. and that like that to me like, Mentally, y'all were that, just on a yeah. different level than everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's that's, that's like I see some of that out of y'all right now, where like y'all coming into these games and it's like, no, we win in this game. Like the game didn't like it is what it is. We win in this game, and that's like right now. If there's any teams in the NBA that have that, it's y'all in Denver. You know, that's like, oh, we win in this game when we walk in, and so, man, bro, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. It's an honor. Uh, good luck in the playoffs. And I'll tell everybody one last story. We won a gold medal in 2021, which was 2020 Olympics. And Drew, Book, K-Mid all arrived the morning of the game because the playoffs went late that year. They were playing in the finals. Drew hops off a plane from L.A., I think, uh, or somewhere in, Seattle. in the west of uh, Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. Hops on a plane, flies all the way to Japan, comes out the gate, no practice, play 31 minutes. We end up losing that first game. Evan Fournier played out of his mind. But crazy. what you did for our offense, like, we got to a point where we lost that first game, we had a players-only meeting, and we just talked, and we like, yo, everybody just play basketball, like, drive. Yeah. If you can score, go score. If you can't, kick it out. And what you did for our offense, like, you just start driving the ball just to kick the ball and, like, starting a domino. And what you, when, I, when I watched you play during the Olympics and you did that offensively, and then obviously what you was doing defensively, like, I obviously had seen you playing and, like, all of these things. But that right there for me, when you were doing that, that took you to a whole nother stratosphere for me in my mind to watch that. And I just want to say thank you because you got me another gold medal. I appreciate you, brother. I can't thank you enough. But, and <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, no, I, thank you for saying that because a lot of people do talk about my defense, but I do take pride in my offense too. You know, absolutely. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I work on it and, and, mm -hmm. and I put in that type of work, but I think knowing what type, the type of talent that I was playing with, like it wasn't really meant for me to score. We got scoring, but I think getting advantage is like getting into the paint. I've seen you do that so many times where you get into the paint, you draw that person up, you throw the lot, or mm -hmm. you draw the person, you get the kick out. So um, I think, man, it was so fun playing not only like the European game, but playing with like the best players in the world, bro. Like mm -hmm. that's like such an honor because who doesn't want to represent their country and play with the best players in the in the best league in the world? So. No, uh, no appreciate doubt. You, Man, brother. my brother, I appreciate you. For those of y'all out there watching, I'm about to send Drew a couple restaurants in Detroit so he can have a whole other experience in Detroit that these NBA players don't be having. And Detroit's going to come a, 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 become a city. It's going to become a player favorite city. Y'all just watch. And I'm starting here with Drew. I can't thank you enough for coming on the show, my brother. And good luck in the playoffs, bro. Yes, sir, bro. You know, you know I'll see you around, hopefully in the finals. 
Absolutely. You playing the Olympics this year? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know you. Good luck, bro. <laughs> I, I, pray, I pray to God Almighty that I can end up carrying somebody back on that team. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, we'll see. We'll see yes, what happens sir. with us, man. Yes, sir. Much love, my dog. Thank you, bro. Yeah, for sure.